elegant. Oh, wow. beautiful. <laughs> I was Rage. ready for like a huge drop. I was yeah. really ready for a drop. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, oh, okay, where's this going? And then it's just that's a it. somber, oh. beautiful nice. melodic intro to our Hat Chat podcast, episode 73, on the 29th of October, 2021. Happy spooky season, everybody. It's a happy spooky season to you. Um, it feels like you're starting a police interview with that level of detail. Um, uh, yeah, the, it's 1409 uh, in the afternoon. The defendant sat down at 1409, Friday, <laughs> the 29th of October. It does One sound day, like, this will be saying us. that the thing did sound very uh, murder mystery or like, I don't know, yeah. some, something you'd yeah, see on a BBC. It's the start of a huge club anthem. That's what it is. It is, is it Midsummer Murders? Yeah. Is, it, is that one of them? Maybe some that of that, kind of yeah. thing. Jonathan yeah. Creek, perhaps. Oh, that has a very bit, or was a little bit of mysticism sound. in Jonathan Creek, wasn't there? They always was. sort of yeah. had the "is this magic" storyline every so often. Yeah, and then it was <laughs> always just like, one? "No, it's just a murder." All oh, right, okay. Do you remember the story about the woman that murder. was suspicious because she ate stuff with a rolled tongue? Did you ever? Do you remember what? that plot line? <laughs> no. So like. One of the things that he brings up at the end, you know, when he does his like, so Jonathan Creek, for people that don't know, was a TV show with Alan. Schmidt. What's his last name? Huh? Oh, Alan. QI. Partridge. No. The guy from QI. Alan. His, name. his name's Alan. Shearer. Um, and he plays um, a guy called Jonathan Creek, which is this, this kind of like strange kooky man that lives in a windmill um, and helps to Davies. solve really. Alan Davies. Um, or Davis. Thanks, Chad. Alan Davis. Or Davies. Meh. Anyway, Alan is his name, and uh, yeah. he solves these bizarre, unsolvable cases using his his unique perspective on life, right? And I always remember one where he's like summing up at the end, and he's like, "And then I realized how she ate. It was how she ate that did it." And like, it was a, a woman who was like t- eating something off a fork and like rolled her tongue around it and pulled it off of the fork by like rolling her tongue. Really weird. That stuck with me since I was about nine. Strange. But it's like, bizarre. Yeah. Do you think um, of it? Y- yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that, that's uh, that's Jonathan Creek. But yeah, maybe that would fit Jonathan Creek. Um, this entire so conversation was based off of us thinking about the intro fingal. Yeah. Uh, you too that's could right, have your fingal talked about at length if you just email it in to hatch at hat-films.com. Think of all that value you just got out of that Christian. Indeed. That's Christian yeah. that did uh, the fingal there. And How also, would you say their surname there? Dib Zwart. Okay. Zwart, maybe. Zwart. No, I like the I like the harsh Zwart. Dib Zwart. Dib Zwart. D Y B, and then Z W A R T. Z for those that want to try well, and pronounce it. You've been absolutely doxed here, <clears throat> Christian. Doxed. So, um, Your name has been read yeah, out. Get doxed poorly. 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 Now, um, now, now. I bet you just can't wait to jump straight into some hypotheticals of the day. Oh, that... well, I can, Trot. I can. Okay, well, let's just wait a bit. Before we then. hit this hypothetical, I've got a special treat for you both. Um, oh, a, a viewer of treat. ours has posted on our Reddit, r slash hat films, oh. um, a joke. Okay. I, I've, I've, I've skimmed it, and I reckon it'll okay. take me about two minutes to read, which will nice. keep us vaguely on schedule. All right, sure. and hold obviously on. you guys are gone. Keep, keep rambling, yeah, and I'll give you I'll a count in. One, two. Because then I right, can time okay. it properly. If you're saying two okay, minutes. Okay, so I've got Ten, two, It's just two minutes nine, exactly. Eight. Um, seven, oh, Jesus Christ. Six, so the title of this five, is going to be Three Boys four, Go Into a Haunted House. Three, That's the title. Two, one. Okay, and I'm live. Three Boys Go Into a Haunted House by Alex Smith. There you go. It's not. They snuck from their beds in the middle of the night and met in the gloomy darkness in front of the house, shivering in the cold. The first boy said in a loud whisper, You guys bring anything? He slid a gun out of his pocket. The second boy nodded and revealed a knife. The third boy pulled a flashlight. You didn't bring a weapon? The first boy asked. He shrugged and replied, Sorry. And as if to prove it, he turned his pockets out to show nothing but stray lint and a pack of cough drops. What fucking error is this in? They, they crept in. I've got bogeys. Um, the door shut behind them. It was pitch black and stone quiet. They were suddenly starting to regret this dare. Oh my God, fucking handgun for a dare. The flashlight clicked on. The aggressive darkness and inky black yielded with grudging compliance, but always seeming to push back. They moved cautiously onward amid the dust and cobwebs. The floor creaked. Their breath in, uh, they breathed in tight, quick breaths. You could hear a pin drop. Suddenly, there was a deep moan. 
Ooh. It seemed from below them. The house had been abandoned for years. Who or what could make such a sound? The boys looked at each other but continued on, hearts pounding in their chests. As they proceeded into the kitchen, they encountered a swarm of flies, buzzing and beating their necks and faces. They rushed and stumbled to the door on the other side, not stopping to see what they were truly feasting on. They slammed the door behind them. Maybe a dead body, but no way they were going to go back there and find out. And again came the sound, but louder this time and closer. They proceeded through the dark into the dining room. They found a fully set, ornate dining table covered in cobwebs. Dust-covered regal goblets, pitchers and silverware adorned the table. Spiders crept over ivory plates. Ivory plates. Clearly a house of privilege and set for a grand feast which never happened, or perhaps met a fatal end. They pushed on, but again the, uh, that unearthly howl. They found the basement staircase, and from below the sound seemed to be emanating. Could they proceed? Would they? Did they dare? Two of the boys looked at each other, faces filled with worry. <clears throat> but the third said confidently, we're going down there. Not wanting to seem the weaker, the other two boys steeled themselves and nodded. The stairs creaked and groaned evilly under their feet. The rickety banister shook in angry defiance. Insects and vermin scattered underneath them with every step. They were descending into hell, they knew, but none would turn back. And the only so and, and the unholy sound then intensified. Woo! Now closer and loud enough to fill not only their heads, but seeming to claw at their very souls. Now at the basement door, the antique crying squeak of the hinges made the boys wince and almost cover their ears. But they had to know, what is making that horrible, terrible sound? In the centre of the basement lay an unholy coffin, a twisted artistic expression of murder, decay and disease. Brutish incorrect lengths had been forced together, buckling the wood and bulging the steel at points as if death itself was attempting to escape. It was festooned with beast-like emblems and decryptive, uh, decryptive artefacts, skulls, antlers, skins, totems and drenched in the colour of blood. It was true, the house really was haunted. Now the boys realised with sheer horror that the insane moaning was definitely coming from the coffin. Before the boys could turn and run, the coffin began to shake. They froze, then it suddenly lifted off the ground. They gaped in terror. Shaking violently and rising, the coffin started to turn. It turned and turned and gained speed. It was spinning in the air before them. A mix of terror and fascination gripped them. Unable to look away, unable to run, it spun faster and faster and faster. <laughs> the first boy with the knife slashed in the air in front of him as if to stab away at the evil. Then he dropped the knife and ran back up the stairs, never to be seen again. The second boy with the gun fired warning shots at the ceiling. Bang, bang, bang! But then thought better of it, dropped the gun and also ran up the stairs, never to be seen again. The third boy stood there calmly, reached into his pocket and popped a cough drop into his mouth. He sucked on it for a bit and the coffin stopped. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> oh. oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All of that had no fucking purpose being there. The whole lot. It just all got thrown away. <laughs> oh, man. That was That's four and a four, half fucking minutes, minutes, by the way. Yeah, too long. Too long, wasn't it? <laughs> That's a bit fucking long <laughs> for a cough oh, joke. Man. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that was yeah. It's good then. It? I zoned out halfway yeah. through. I'm not going to lie, Smith. Oh, was, did you? <laughs> it was a struggle. Were you falling asleep? Follow. Were you falling asleep? I mean, no, there was I a just spooky drifted. Element, which kind of is is topical, I guess. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, thank you for spooky. the spooky element for this. Sure. Yeah, yeah it's no yeah. problem, guys. No problem. This is Halloween themed now. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the majority of this podcast is taken up by that joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we have time to, for today. Um, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. That. Uh, that was um, yeah. Who was that? One a.m. Lost. Thanks, user. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, wasting everybody's time, not just ours. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you for that one. Holy crap. Yeah. Um. Amazing. Right. So on to the hypotheticals then. Okay. Jeez. Number one on the list is the following, as chosen by our patrons. Thank you, patron. Please visit. Um, how would you change if you how you acted? If you knew 100% that the world was a simulation. Oh. Well, I mean, what's the... Uh, As in, like, would you do some crazy shit, basically? Well, what's the, I would then ask, what's the point of the simulation? Why how, are we simulated? How do you prove how it? How can I... How, I would try and break through the simulation. I would really, try and You'd do, try and matrix you know, this shit. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I would try and fuck around with it because I think it's much more... I wouldn't just instantly be like, well, oh, nothing matters, so I'm just going to go out and kill and murder because you're still confined to the simulation. So you need to kind of like work out a way to use it. But if the, the simulation is that good, surely like you st still don't get away with those crimes. Exactly. It's like, not necessarily about like not caring that you're in a simulation to yeah. do whatever you want. It's, it's more interesting to ask... Why is there a simulation? You know? I guess, would you feel a bit freer or would you feel more trapped in the sense that you've, you I could, think, I like, think nothing you really great. matters? You know, then that it's like, well, well whatever you, you do doesn't really impact on anything for real. But then, what that is your reality. So, it, I mean, it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> it's I, tearing again, us there's apart. Some, there's some really, <laughs> it's tearing me apart. I'm just conflicted at every corner. There's some really interesting areas of philosophy that basically deal with this and about like whether it actually they matters it's done with it, whether they? you're in a simulation or not. Well, not dealt with, cover it, <laughs> they, discuss they it is probably a better word. But the, I mean, there's ton, there's tons of philosophy about this, this very problem of like, what is real? How do you tell yeah. whether what you're doing, but does it then even matter whether it's real or not if you find value in it, you know? And like, if you, is there are consequences up. in that reality that you still have to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, but then it sh are the consequences? I think a world without consequences would become quite boring. It'd be like, um, of course, yeah, like cheat mode. You know, God mode becomes dull after a bit. It's fun for a bit, but eventually it ruins the game. So, if you were to create a simulation, I think that yeah. it makes sense that we wouldn't remember that we're in a simulation because that would give us an authentic experience. Like, say this was an entertainment product, or say this was a form of holiday or something. You know, perhaps we do. They say, hey. You live in this super advanced life in this ultra futuristic utopia world. Don't you fancy living a kind of like old styley life? And they're like, you could, you too could be Alex Smith. You go back and are born into the body of a long necked, slightly ginger man <laughs> born in Somerset. And you will have your consciousness transplanted into them. You won't remember that process and you'll get the joy of a life discovered once again. You know, like that kind of might be interesting for an ultra advanced species so maybe that is the case but potentially probably not though i'd say it's more likely we're just sort of quite advanced monkeys that die like everything else yeah but i mean it's always not asking if we think it's a simulation it's just asking if we would change if if we change how we would act um if we knew it but then like when you think about like something like the matrix where you see the other side mm. Would and you want shit. to go to the other side? <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, oh, do I want to go behind the scenes where it's actually like they've created yeah. this because they're trying to avoid uh, well, the reality? It's all like and, an inception where they want to dream because reality is shit. That's exactly, that ties in just perfectly to this whole meta Facebook thing, right? So I don't know if you've okay. seen any of the stuff that Zuckerberg's yeah. been talking about with what he did like a weird yeah. sort of CGI presentation where he's in a virtual world that looks kind of shitty. Um, and they're like going, this is so cool. And then you've got like some fucking person that joins in on VoIP and their avatars in a space station. So they're like floating around and being like, ha ha, this is so good. When in reality, they'll never be able to simulate the sensation of anti-gravity with a fucking VR headset. Um, you know, like, like, but what, what a lot of people are saying is like, why is this asshole focusing on developing a virtual world when they could be saving the real one? And I think we've really like in the last few years moved on now culturally from this idea of these incredible virtual worlds that everyone's excited to play mm. to like the reality of virtual reality. That's right. I like this. The reality of what virtual reality currently looks like is good and fun, but by no means a replacement for a life or the amazing world outside right and mm. then that's been compounded by the fact that everyone's had to stay inside so even more that appreciation for the outside i think we've gone from being excited about virtual worlds because we know they're never going to live up to real life at the moment um yeah. so why on earth would anyone be excited about the fucking metaverse that Z robo zuckerberg yeah. is inventing i feel like also very few people have actually been able to experience high quality vr yeah in its current state so and like, those who have don't really yeah. I mean it's well, that's what I'm saying. It's, just, it's, it's a fun experience but like yeah. you, it's not something you want to stay in for like a long period of time yeah. it's, not it's fun for an experience it's fun fun for a couple yeah, of games yeah. but obviously sure yeah I'm sure they'll advance to a point where it's it's really you know groundbreaking but yeah, yeah nothing would compare to actually wanting to experience um, clean air and countryside and yeah. real things um, yeah yeah so yeah, exactly. I, I can't imagine you could even dream of replacing that properly. 
I, I think I think one day it will be possible. I don't think it's Maybe. anywhere near that right now. We're still just looking at screens with lenses in that make things appear right. We're nowhere mm -hmm. near the level of like true virtual reality. It's like it, neuro it, connections, yeah, right? That, I think that's yeah, where the, yeah. it's going to mm -hmm. lie, the Neuralink kind of direction where your body yeah, it's gonna, isn't it's physically going anywhere, it. but your mind exactly. is fooled by mm -hmm. that fact, essentially. Um, yeah. I, I think it could happen in our lifetimes. I think potentially that that could be something that could happen in our lifetimes. I think that it's still a long way away because the whole like, you know, does this mean that if you want that kind of experience, you have to go into surgery to get one of these things put in? Like, you know, how's that ever going to be rolled out on mass where every single person has to have advanced brain surgery? Like, you know, they're yeah. going to have to come up with Do you think the vaccine some was like heavily anti-vaxxed? <laughs> uh, imagine this, yeah. like with like putting a neurochip in your brain. Exactly. Uh, well, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's not a medical necessity like either. So it doesn't help others. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it would be a choice thing. But yeah, I mm -hmm. think I'm sure there'll be groups against this type of thing in the future. Because obviously they, they kicked up a fuss about Google Glass just because of the cameras and privacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though so our phones spying. are like a literal... Just, yeah, one just step like, away. I yeah, think everyone like, sees that connection once it's like visual. It's like there's a camera filming stuff and they don't consider like the... Um, more ephemeral uh, data that is gathered, you know, almost like quietly and stealthily by your phone, mm -hmm. rather than like, oh my God, it saw the stuff, it's recording visually. Like, well, it's kind of got yeah. all your biometric data and your algorithm algorithms are tailored to your tastes and personality, and that's mm -hmm. even more. Um, but I think people's actions being filmed are a lot more tangible. And I think that's a lot more like oh, visceral for the average person. They're like, well, I don't want to be that's seen what I mean. to, it's, it's a, in a private it's place. To I don't want my conversations to be recorded. But then, yeah, like you say, you know, all of that could be if our, our phones record our voices to hear, you know, oh, Siri yeah. and Alexa and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what if you figured out, right? You yeah. say there's three glands in we your know. face that if you hold them <laughs> and then push your nose, you get a brief glimpse of the world outside the simulation for like okay. a split second and you could do that once a day <laughs> it's like oh my god you just saw like yourself in like the matrix vat <laughs> you're in the van, so you, you've woken up you're just in a jelly pool of jelly you could wake for like a, a second and then you yeah. boom you're straight back in the simulation but you figured out by like you had a little factory reset by yeah. pushing the nose <laughs> this is literally what how is like meth heads think this is this is this is like you know you get these like, people on meth tend to like really just think like crazy shit right it is like one of these drugs that makes your mind go t to the point of like all the royals or lizards and things like that right it, it makes them think they find links in places they don't and like something like this where it's just like i've worked out how to see it so the simulation man all you gotta do is bang your head on the, the, the door five times and then push your nose in and then hold your breath for four and a half minutes and you will get outside the zone and they're yeah. still you just gotta do a little bit of this h bro what yeah <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see the other side. The idea of a simulation uh, yeah. is a strange concept. Um, yeah. Because it suggests a higher power, right? Not necessarily... Well, yeah. Something, something other, other A worldly. controlling force, it could, yeah. it could well be us causing it to ourselves, like you say. Like yeah, like we've entertain. chosen to come in here, but we forget that we've already gone in. Or we could be lab rats for a greater thing. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's just a strange concept that is hard to disprove much like God is hard to disprove unanimously. Yeah. We don't really know 100% that there is nothingness. Would you choose... Reason, the Sorry. only reason I think that a simulation could be real any more than I can think a God could be real is because I can understand in part how and why a simulation would be something you people would be interested it. in yeah yeah exactly like you feel On like you can understand level. the steps there for me like it makes sense that people would want to experience this life as a sort of game or as a uh, experience or something you know like if you could replicate it and we can replicate things we can simulate things so that makes sense for me to think that there's some sort of specific god with a specific like mandate and a specific like codified text is just a bit like 
What? what? Yeah, I think that's <laughs> a lot of it's. If it is true, it's probably distorted by the fact that humans have imposed those codes <laughs> on other humans you, because it benefits yeah. them. Um, do you think you would go into a simulation if you knew that you could feel like pain at the most extreme level? What? No. Why? Why would I choose well, a simulation? It wasn't like it? talking about talking about this for you know oh, simulation, knowing you, that there's you know, no consequence. If you you know you cut yourself, you're going to feel the pain. Mm. Like, and that's uh, that's a very visceral feeling. Like, unless that's something that obviously that's part of the human experience. But um, is that something you'd want to simulate? You know, when we did that Azana band thing, that was all about you know I could feel everything, or oh, even pain. It's just like, um, would you not choose to flick that one? on the off mode well mr hornby we've noticed here that you have um you've done your character selection that's really good um course, you've chosen yeah. a man in swindon uh you've gone oh, for no, the lowest yeah. tier package because for that you face. are really chose skinned that so you've gone for a lot of major attributes like creative that's lovely but we're gonna have to give you eczema like strong strong eczema and yeah, uh also bad eczema. uh yeah Those you're balls, gonna uh, yeah oversized too big. oversized really balls. large Heavy. So it's just going to have to balance it out. I feel like that yeah. would be, if the simulation is there, there's a business involved and you yeah. have the option of like upgrading and being on the plus package and being a billionaire like Elon Musk. <laughs> or you can just live out a mundane yeah. life and jack it 24-7 in your yeah, dorm you room. Just have, it's the, um, the low and not tier. amount to anything. I mean, first prices. of all, before you get to play that game, though, Mr. Hornby, you need to watch this ad. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Wow. Ads everywhere. That was it. Just, you can you just ad? install ads all over the world that I uh, live in? Is yeah, that, yeah. There'll be ads everywhere. I, I mean, I, it, if we really extrapolate this, there's there's two problems with it. A, you're right. In order for this to make any sense, I think that the, the civilization that would create the simulation would be so advanced that, that like money would potentially not be a thing right because Star the civilization is sufficiently advanced yeah exactly would be able to replicate matter would be able to create things they need or want without consequence or cost right mm -hmm. and so therefore it kind of eliminates the need um for that sort of element to it but second of all if you are at that level of advancement and you're sort of that level of species that you're probably you know interstellar you can you can see all that the world a type three civilization on the kardashev scale for, Right, exactly. That's good. That's uh, at, like you know, I would you it. really be that interested in simulating like a human's life on one planet that doesn't have potentially a particularly interesting life? I mean, if all of us are you know real people in simulations together, which I think could, you know could be possible, um, or if you believe the other element uh, where you are the only real one within your simulation and everything else is created for you, then that one could mean that only one person in this civilization decided to do it. So that's you. you. Your consciousness, the one that you're currently experiencing, is that one that's like, oh, I found this quaint little planet in the middle of like the Milky Way galaxy. Um, I'm going to live a life as them a minute, you know? And they do like literally that game from um, Rick and Morty, you know, the life of that oh, guy. Yeah. Same thing. What if? But I don't... I, yeah. The, the real you. Maybe, maybe the life is so so bad where the or, like, origin is that this is... Paradise, a better alternative any form yeah it's uh, like why well, i prefer to play random mode you're essentially an npc for some for like the billionaires that have paid for the better package you're mm. just like a guy walking in the street for them but you're yeah. filler yeah i mean yeah yeah for real but they're yeah. just and they're, manufactured uh, consciousness yeah. yeah yeah i mean god wow what's a better life than what you had that would be <laughs> jesus christ that's that's like a but that's literally like when he makes uh the uh, in brick and mortar again where he uh, turns a little machine that serves butter Mm -hmm. give that what is my purpose <laughs> and in and a way it's the subtext of westworld as well yeah um, of, course. Of, of like these people realizing who they are what they are i mean it's awesome it's an amazing thing mm. to think about yeah, what is a my lot purpose? of thought uh, you just serve butter oh yeah yeah oh. welcome to the welcome to the club pal oh my god he says oh <laughs> it's a really god. good scene yeah welcome to the club pal <laughs> what if all right other thought we're actually a yeah. super advanced organism, each mm -hmm. of us. And right. in, it's not just enough for you to be what, a single person in the simulation. You're actually all of them. But you, yeah. your consciousness is focused on one at a time. And then when this one perishes, you, you switch to another one. But you're actually operating all the other ones at the same time, but on a lower level so that you can interact with them. But your right. perspective is shifted from one. How does memory work in that scenario? Well, you can only focus on the one perspective at the time. 
So you are taking it from that one, and then when you die, your focus switches to another. But you, you know, you're a very like powerful a... organism that's operating all the other ones as well. Yeah. But then also, in a way, though, aren't you still sort of a slave to that mechanism because you you have no control over when you forget what you've. Because yeah. I presume when you switch, you you just have the memories of whatever like host you're in now. Um, and that would mean that you would always remember being you and it wouldn't feel strange, right? That's why you never realize it's mm. happening because you're like, no, I am me, I'm this one. And then that one dies and you're like, no, I'm me. This is the memories and the life I've had. But equally, you're kind of only, you're just a slave to the fact that you move between bodies. You aren't re truly a consciousness. You are, like, what is the link between two consciousnesses? This is a little bit like the teleportation argument. Like, if you don't remember where you were before, then is that that person is essentially dead because you don't have their memories anymore you have this new set of memories yeah. so well we're thinking on imagine like a we're on 2d plane right and our consciousness is limited to that and we can't see beyond into mm -hmm. 3d uh but mm -hmm. there is we're, we're like this massive organism that is existing in 3d and links all those consciousness together just because the mm -hmm. ones on the 2d plane can't like share their memories with the other one it's still connected mm -hmm. in a in a higher plane you see what i mean Perhaps, we're just seeing a slice of life. I just think life. that, like, Occam's... Is it Occam's razor? Like, the simplest answer is often the correct one. Um, uh, was, yeah. Explanations that posit fewer entities or fewer kinds of entities are to be preferred to exp explanations that posit more. So, essentially, yeah, the simplest answer is often the most correct. I just feel like that might be the case. But, I, I, I mean, I, I truly believe we just die and stop i think that's sad i'd love to think that there was more but i, just I, th don't I think, think there's, there's a... any argument otherwise why would we have any different an experience to death than I guess all of the other a, animals a full explanation of consciousness and how consciousness came about it's hard to imagine what, mm. what yeah, could it be is. so it's just like does your consciousness consciousness just disappear uh or is it like a just a floating orb in the atmosphere who fucking knows but um well if we take like science as like energy is never killed right it's only transferred yeah. mm -hmm. you could essentially say nothing really truly dies and that mm. all things are one and the same thing and that even yeah. though this version of this molecular atom structure that forms alex smith may die in its state it's just essentially transferring somewhere else so mm -hmm. really no i i totally i can buy into that yeah of course it's, so, it's just lucky that at this point in time in the universe, they, those 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 atoms and that energy is combined to create a thinking process that represents me for a little while. And yeah, and, and um, think how tiny, like we mentioned mm -hmm. in another hat chat, the humanity's existence is on the universal yeah. scale. Like we're literally a blip, and then Alex Smith is like a a nano nano blip of existence. Mm -hmm. The chances are of another thing surfacing into consciousness in a different part of the universe that's made up of the same molecules and atoms and energy um, is quite likely, especially if we're thinking about the inf infinite universe. Um, it was to say that consciousness yeah. would reform in the exact same way as an Alex mm -hmm. Smith. Uh, you're not aware of it, which is a shame. <laughs> but yeah, the I idea still think of it's, it's important, even when you think about these things, it's important to kind of, I guess, value the fact that you still only have one life. And like... As far as you know, you're aware, yeah. Only, as far Make as you're aware. most of this one, So yeah. it's, it's important to value that, right? Mm -hmm. No, I'm um, going to check it for 24 the same hours way. in but my if, dorm. Well, if you value that, then that's, that's entirely on you. But <laughs> it's more of a case of, um, you know, it's just the horrible shit you see every day in the news and stuff. The horrible things people do to other people. It's like, mm. that's where you want people to have value most. Regardless you of what suggesting they have. We get all, as many people as we can, up in a dick rocket and then reevaluate everything <laughs> yes. once they see their tiny speck of As soon as they planet. see it, they need to speak to a billionaire on a personal level and wait until he pops off that champagne cork. Give him a Shatner experience. Give me, give me one. Could, I want one. I want a bottle. Could it, could it trigger, a, do you think it would trigger a, a new era of humanity if we did that and gave everyone that life-changing perspective? Like, do you think well, everyone that's the would first come down and be like, I'm going to live different yeah. every time? So, so it's not yeah, almost it's like a public service be great to give if there people was, that yeah. perspective. That would be phenomenal. It'd be to value life. So yeah, expensive. That would be incredible. <laughs> 
But if we can yeah. find a cheap way to like when you reach adulthood or whatever, which I think everyone needs to go through their teenage and formative years being grounded in humanity and, and the regular like education stuff. I think that's important. But like once you that hit cool. adulthood, you mm. then like, okay, let me show you the world you're in and mm. being an adult and its responsibilities from this perspective. Boom. Holy shit. That would be... I feel like, like 21 would be a great age for that kind of thing. You know, when yeah. you're just about like becoming an adult-ish. You know, you're not... You're from, you probably don't really feel like... I didn't start feeling like an adult until I was about 30. Um, but like, yeah. And you can I, have, know, sure. I, think, I think it really depends on, yeah, people's mm. life experience. And it's like 18 as well. Responsibilities. Mm. You have your first pint, right? And that scene is like, a, wow, you're stepping to adulthood. Really, like that's kind of a shit way of celebrating like the responsibility of being an adult and like being thrown into this world where no mm. one really knows anything like just get a bit yeah. tipsy on it and like why is that just held at such a high pedestal when it can be swapped out for uh, something like an eye opening and see the fucking planet from this perspective mm. uh, I guess it's a lot cheaper to have a pint than be thrust it into space is, yeah. <laughs> definitely um <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can also, have your beer like, when you're most up there. People, that's the most. That's a very exciting thing, isn't it? When especially for us, like I don't know whether I think it is changing a bit now. But for us, it was all about like, oh, you can drink now, and like for us, that was like the biggest like f- social thing you could do. It's like, yeah, you could go to the pub. Yeah, but, but like we all drank before then. I think it's kind of an obvious. Yeah, it's just that yeah, it's that, that tick well. mark of like, oh, you hit that eighteen mark or whatever. Yeah, and then you can also watch eighteen films, and it's like thinking yeah. about that now it's it's almost they are constructs you know, you consider the rating of a film mm-hmm. our society is formed and deemed like you can't have this until this age yeah. it's like an unlock <laughs> you, you've earned it an is, achievement yeah. that's what it is we so, need more of those these unlocks we need to we need yeah. some unlocks it's like you can't like see space until you're 20 <laughs> <laughs> What is it? I want to see it. I want to come. <laughs> that would there. generate so much hype. It's like we're going to show you the fucking like how the world works and the solar system, but not right now. We're going to teach you the mm. basics, but you're going to see fucking what the planet looks like. <laughs> Age That'd twenty-one. That'd be very cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, because you probably could get away with like not knowing about planets, like. The sun is probably quite an important thing to uh, explain, but yeah, you're, you're right. With like perspective, because when you learn, someone's going to spoil it for really everyone. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, that would be mind blowing. Like, okay, so and at one so point, it's... would it be taken for granted eventually? Where it's just like, oh, I don't really care about mm-hmm. going up there. And when you go out there, like, oh yeah, whatever, I've seen it before. Like, you know, you can't change everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, well, but no, you can't. Every life is essentially new right it's sure you're surrounded yeah. by people that could be jaded by that but that mm. person that individual hasn't witnessed it yet so mm. there's still a chance well i that... guess the the achievable form of that is just traveling the world as it's yeah and seeing new yeah. things and seeing uh new places and interesting places and cultures um that's kind of the equivalent of what you could do now rather than just seeing space it's appreciating the things that people um, don't have access to normally because of mm-hmm. you know it's expensive it costs mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. and it does know. yeah it costs loads i mean there's there's more to see on earth than i think you would have the time in a lifetime of course, really yeah. even with enough bloody money but you're right the main problem is usually money or like you can do it on the back of a bicycle on a shoestring but living off the back of a fucking bicycle you know yeah. like you, you can do that i suppose yeah. it's about it's the type of thing that would be really shit to do up. at the time. You'd probably be like really mm. like arduous, but after mm. you've done it, the achievement you'd feel would be incredible. Because um, I know well, I'm, you've, you've met him. Um, I know someone who's travelled all over um, the Middle East, uh, from Australia on a on a bike, on a motorbike, through India and stuff. And he just yeah, he said it was just such an eye opening thing to go through these countries and yeah, it's just. But not everyone can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I imagine that's the equivalent of what you could achieve now rather than just having to go to space. But the space thing is the next step, right? If only it we watch that as the real opinions were. It's, it's really st- sad, really, because it feels like we're just leapfrogging. Like, we're trying to get to space too early, almost. You know, I, I don't I so. feel that we have... Like, uh, the thing about space races and the... Se- well, it's not really a race. Well, it kind of is a race. It's um, a billionaire race but- now. This was a commercial. Like, it's not necessarily these these flights may un- allow some civilians to see space, which of course would give them a very valuable perspective. But ultimately, <clears throat> you know, the advancements we need 
come in many forms and other technologies need to be further developed. I mean, the fact that we're still blasting rockets into space, you know, not using some form of like emissionless like energy, you know, source, right? Rather than, you know, they're still having to burn a shitload of stuff to throw a lot of weight up into the yeah. air, which is impressive. And the, the fuels and the way that the fuels are used is evolving. But ultimately we haven't had like, you know, some form of massive revolution in physics that lets us understand how to use gravity, for example, like, you know, yeah. which one day we may have. You see recently, actually, um, there was an, an experiment to see um, this thing called a um, sterile, new, uh, sterile, oh, fuck. It's what light passes through us. Uh, light passes through everything. Neutrinos, I think they're called. So neutrinos um, pass through everything. Um, uh, they're like a, a form of particle or something. I'm not sure. Um, but they were, wave. They exist in 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 several different forms. Um, and uh, essentially, it's a little bit like dark matter or antimatter, in that they were looking for something that proved the reason for an existence of other things right so they're like for our current model of physics to work um or at least a lot of what people were thinking the existence of this thing called a sterile neutrino needed to exist so it was a a certain particle that did a certain thing and that helped to um sort of reinforce the standard model of working physics right now like why why we think things work the way they work and this is the math that kind of shows that it should work like this but they failed to find it which means that like a lot of like the working theories and like ideas from really really intelligent people um have proven not to be the reason like that, 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 that these things exist so there must be another reason essentially so like it just means that there's now this sort of avenue of thinking for what gives reality realness that they now can explore, which is really exciting. And, and I mean, I think things like that are what's going to push humanity forward, not commercial flights into space. Uh, like, and not putting a mask on and pretending that everything's okay in your little virtual reality world. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's like, what, yeah. what yeah. do these guys want from us other than trying to put ants yeah, in front I, of us? I, yeah, I don't feel like they're trying to better the human race. They're trying to sell no. product, products. They're trying to commercialize yeah. a, a way of life, essentially. I hate that they've used the word meta as well. That's so arrogant. I hate that. Yeah, if you don't yeah, know, Facebook, the uh, like, well, the company Facebook is rebranding to Meta and their products within it are either being cannibalized into Meta or are becoming part of their Meta, like Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram. They're keeping their names. Oculus is removing its branding and has just become becoming Meta, I believe. And it's going to be like the gateway in to Meta. Um, and it's just fucking dystopic shit, really. <laughs> Mm. It's scary. Very dystopic, yeah. It's Ready Player One, but like, yeah, boring and commercial. <laughs> what's important to remember as well is that, um, like, our Western or European or you know, yeah, Western opinion of this may be shared among a lot of us, and a lot of people may be thinking, yeah, this is bullshit. Yeah, Facebook's crap. Like, everybody our age doesn't use it anymore. You know, it's all our parents' age and things like that. But, like, I guess the other thing to think is, like, even if we all hate it, I think the biggest users of Facebook in the world are, are, are the Philippines. Oh, really? So, like, this isn't necessarily even for us. Like, it's presented in English or yeah. by an American. But ultimately, even if all of us hate it and none of us use it, we'll either be using one of their other newer platforms, like Instagram, or yeah. we will see it being taken on by you know m more emerging markets be it the philippines be it places like china although china isn't i don't think particularly facebook um heavy they have their own social media platforms um but yeah i mean that's the other thing it's like we can be very anti this and never use facebook again but it doesn't mean that facebook is necessarily going away because there no, are markets not, yeah. that we don't know about that well, this is their shift away from they facebook. just buy what they want right yeah that's yeah. what these companies do that yeah. if, if a popular platform rises up and uh decides to sell to them They'll just consume it. They'll just be that but ultimately, giant this, company that just gobbles everything up. Going back to the space thing, it's ultimately like Bezos is a massive sci-fi nerd. Elon Musk is a sci-fi nerd. Yeah, That's ultimately they're just living out their fantasies and just that's why we're getting a leap now in space uh, 
race in quotes and forgetting all the other stuff because it's boring to them to like fix the planet and fix climate change yeah. this is just like a big bravado like They've i've always wanted to go games. to space i'm going to build my own rocket to go there that's yeah. ultimately the whole thing that's driving this rather than like a societal like shift into like you know oh, yeah. going to the moon and stuff like that that was a very the corporate different... element as well because they know they can sell this as a product so yeah it's it's yeah it's not for any spiritual reasoning they're just like oh look we can make this into a product it'll be fucking fun to do and yeah they, you're right they're probably bored of you know the fact that they have the unlock mode they've got everything they want yeah like the, the simulation the smith said it was the cheat mode it'll be boring and i think they've ultimately cheated this version of their reality and they're looking hmm. for the next big high which is literally being as high as they possibly can <laughs> yeah and because obviously the, the, there's still that full risk of just blowing up in the sky so there's probably that lofty high that as well thrill. which survived that too so they've achieved yeah. something which you know astronauts would have trained their entire lives to do and their ego must be fucking sky high right now like in lower earth orbit um mm. after both surviving that and and having like the money to fund all the people to make that happen it's like mm. i made that happen me alone i am the head of it <laughs> christ so let's tank yeah. them quickly um and yeah. then fund everything else that'd be nice be nice yeah Christ, this... i it's quite interesting but it is yeah I was, <laughs> it's, say it's getting it fucking long. went didn't it that one mm. i knew the simulation thing would kick off a big old conversation um all right very very quickly then it's going to be a bit sillier you find a book um all right wait is this the right one yeah i think so is that another one? Yeah, yeah, it's the right one. You find a book and you begin to read, only to discover that it's your life. You get to the point where you're at now. Do you turn the page knowing that you'll not be able to change the events that come? So you know what's going to happen next. So I now know that I, that I have no free will. Okay. Well, that's just, already... Yeah. Um, yes. or either that or someone's predict... Yeah, it's, it's either a prediction or it is literally just written in stone. That's it. That's your... But if I can't life. change what's going to happen, I don't have free will. you flick yeah. to the like, like middle without realizing, oh, God, what's this story about? And you've already flipped because I'm horrible. And then you're like, oh, fuck. I'll best start I skim read it. Fuck. Like, wait, hang on. <laughs> this is my life. And then... Um, and he yeah. died. Yeah, yeah. And what was if the forgotten. book is like... The, the, my page is like really far to the back. Yeah. Like the, 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 well, there's hardly any pages left. Na- yeah, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> you're like, shit. Hell. You could literally see how long you've got left in page form. Oh my yeah. God, that'd be terrifying. Yeah. We're all there together reading our own books, and yours is like fucking <laughs> Lord of the Rings, like, <laughs> epic <laughs> length. I, I thought like, why, why is mine so big? Is there a second so book? <laughs> is, there, is there a part two? <laughs> this is God, it's like a journal. <laughs> So, why did someone uh, bullet journal just, this would one? you like to know the future of your life um i don't think so otherwise you again it's all it's like the unlock code of everything it's like no mystery no excitement what's the point and also you you would feel like your decisions mean nothing so i'd rather that veil of of choosing my own uh, you're path. that guy in the matrix that's holding the meat up you know what? like yeah if uh if i can't tell the difference <laughs> If it, it if matter? it gave you that sense of yeah, that psychology of I'm in control of my own decisions, then yeah, I'd rather have that. I think rather than yeah, this, but this then if thin, it didn't, flimsy book has decided my fate, and there's not many pages left. I think it would be interesting. <laughs> You'd have a choice. I, it depends how interesting <laughs> my life would seem it was going to be, right? Because if I was like, you know, I was like, I'm ready for some massive change to my life. Being the only person in the world that knows exactly how their life will go would be quite an interesting experience, you know? Like, it would completely change your perspective on life. You would, But the thing is, is, yeah, with this clause of, like, you can't change the future, then it's it just means loophole. you know exactly what you're going to do tomorrow, you know? Like, yeah. I know that I wake up at 8.38 and then I um, eat a, a bagel and then I do this for five hours, you know, like... Yeah, that but this in, has been explored in media so often and it's just like, mm-hmm. well, then you just strive to change it and then it's just like, then you the can't. pages aren't the same... But you say you, what you mean, you're, you're literally just, so you, let's say, Everything you're, well, that I'm going to pick up my phone right now. And this like, is the paradox. You try not to, you're like, I've got to pick up my phone. It's the is paradox you, are you of this. Are fighting yourself? Well, it's the paradox of this whole question, because hmm. the very discovery of this book is already pre-written. The idea that you have this huge fundamental shift in your way of life is already pre-written. Like, yeah. that's already in place based on this book, but the book was so, already there. Um, sure, but if you read if you read a few pages along and it says you didn't go to the casino and bet all on whatever, and then you know what the result is going to be or whatever, yeah, like surely if mm-hmm. you you could change it, 
No. Yeah, no, that's the problem. I think you, that's the paradox wrestle. of like you, you're in this cycle of like, well, I, I want to change it because I know what the future is. It's written in this book, unless the book changes. I think you'd be paralyzed by choice and do yeah. nothing. So you'd you wouldn't end yeah. up gambling anyway. Unless you, like, you're that just like, well, I, don't ma- I don't want to ruin something. Maybe. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't know the numbers because you never got to that point because you wrestle with the idea of like I'm trying to find. In, instead you'd be reading uh i'm wrestling with the thoughts and i'm flicking through yeah. the pages trying to find answers to everything but there's nothing there and that, that yeah. would ultimately go be through the 50 next pages week. just yeah. in a dilemma should yeah. i read the next page i wasn't sure so I it's like on. a choose your own adventure but it's predetermined <laughs> it's like now you're gonna pay flick to page 232 to see if like you can find out where you ha- where you go next mm. and it turns out on that page I'm still here. I need to go back to like page two uh, yeah. and pick up where you I left off. You find yourself in a room flicking through a book. Yeah. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Yeah. And you, you just go insane reading that book. You walk into the office to find everyone's reading your book. But that's They've the thing. Got if to if, if the you end. found out that and you found out that everything, you have no free will and everything yeah. is planned, everything's determined for you, then you would, you probably switch from this feeling of, you know, you don't know what next day is going to be to just, I am not in control of my own body. Mm. Like, I am a passenger in my experience. I'm just looking out through these holes in my head and, like, you know. Isn't this a Will Ferrell bo- uh, film? It is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, what is it called? Stranger than Fiction. Stranger than Fiction. Again, though, yeah. never been done well. Like all of these. No, it's, it's really hard. Well, there was, a, there was another always one. a paradox. Hard. Yeah. yeah or either that or it's like kind of there's a teenage angst about it where it's just like i'm meeting my dream girl but she's just a, a character i wrote in a book like there was another film i can't remember what's called um, the thing is like that <laughs> all of these ones are like the author is writing as you go so you don't really yeah. know where it's going to end up whereas this Doesn't version of it is like no it's all there you yeah. see the end point it's there and you could flick to it and then you kind of know and then i reckon you'd either choose if to it was like an never e-book, look at- i'd feel a bit more comfortable <laughs> at least then you don't know where the pages end Sure. You necessarily I, I, you can really put a percentage in the bottom though you can yeah <laughs> really thinking about it if you knew when you were going to die most people i think is a very sane and reasonable reaction to say i don't know when or how i want to die because uh, sort of how i die because mm. like why would i want to know that like what what you know that's would you agree with that sentiment most people would say i don't well, want yeah, to know when not. and how i Although, die um, yeah yeah i think it's, it happens quite often that when people know that they haven't got much time left they then they make the most to of the it. fullest. Yeah, this is yeah. what I'm about to say. So, right. if instead you took, because I that was my first reaction. I'm like, God, no, I wouldn't want to know when I was going to die. Like that would be horrible. You, you your entire life would be on a ticking like timer. You'd be so mm-hmm. anxious all the time. But then equally, you're right. Like I've seen, like you know, or talk to people who, yeah, know know their time is up or whatever, and they are very, very, very grateful of like every moment they get. And you're like, man, if you could know that and you knew that you had, you know, 30 years left or something like that. Just imagine how like much you'd be um, motivated to fill True, that time yeah. With, yeah. with great things. And would you live a very full and great life? Because you do know when you're going to die, you know? like Would you always have that lion? Yeah, maybe. I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Everything in moderation, But yeah, like right? in, in terms of, yeah. Like, but I guess it's, it, it's that sudden like, well, there's a few months rather than what you would expect would be several yeah. years. You're like, well, now I've got to squeeze mm-hmm. a, a lifetime of, of memories and, and moments into a very Every short, decision you condensed make space. Would but be yeah, you're right. Counted. You should really value, again, it goes back to valuing your life mm-hmm. yeah. and others' lives as well. Yeah. I think, I think it's easy for us to be like, ah, put it off because you don't really know. It's fine. Of course. Because yeah. like, the future is like an ephemeral thing that you just kind of close off. You don't even think about it. You yeah. don't want to. But knowing that there's that finite end every decision you make is always going to be balanced against that. Like, well, am I really going to waste today doing that, knowing that the end is at that point? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that would be a great motivator every time you, you're ever questioning whether it's worth doing something or not. It's like, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> that could be another day lost, considering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Maybe it would be a, a, a good thing. Maybe. We've well, almost we'll finished Final Fantasy, so... That's one thing off. <laughs> ah, shit. God, wait. That's a big chunk of this book. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my life. Several pages in here, which is... The, the Doesn't Final come Fantasy close to wow. Yeah. Doesn't come Three close part. to wow. That took way more of my life. Anyway. <laughs> let's wrap it up there, shall Probably we? Probably all we've got time for, yeah. That, That's that enough a lot of existential dread thinking. for everybody. Yeah. Um, there you go. Not even any funny news today. Um, just don't have time for it. 
we know when the end's coming. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed Calm today. Uh, if you would like to send a finger in, like Christian, please send it to hatchat at hat-films.com. I'm scouring the old ones to find ones that we haven't used yet. So it'd be nice to get some new ones in there too, to sprinkle in. Thank you very much. And also a big thanks to our Patreon supporters who get the ad-free version on patreon.com slash hatfilms. Uh, so if you're sick of the ads getting injected in, then maybe that's an option for you. You can also check out uh, our Hat Chat podcast on YouTube if you'd like to see our faces for whatever reason. Um, there's that. There's that option for you if you prefer that format. And until then, we'll see you next week for more Hat Chat. Another 40 to 50 minutes. I think we're they're getting longer, aren't they? <laughs> they're getting longer. They're creeping. Uh, we can't help it. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for another one. Have a great Indeed. spooky season. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.